Hello space travelers and welcome to my little corner of the galaxy. I hope you had a great weekend and a good start to your week. How's it going? Got some uh, fun stuff to talk about today and uh, I'm going to start on another project. Let me know if the music is too loud, as always. My, I'm a little hard of hearing, so. <laughs> Going good, just chilling. Good, good, good. There you go. I thought it was funny that my stream fell on April Fools and the start of um, Autism Acceptance Month, so, um, had a couple of things lined up for that today. Right. My, uh, I had a little technical difficulty. I couldn't get my, uh, my iPad wasn't connecting to the reflector program that I used, but all good. <clears throat> right. Give it a few minutes, let people pile in or sneak on into the stream. Alright, how was your weekend, David? Hi, Lexi! Let's see here. So, for uh, this evening, um, I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, just kind of start off with uh, a brief brief history of April Fool's um and maybe just here um have you guys had any like nice pranks played on you not mean ones <laughs> um I have I have I think a couple of stories for that and then um for autism acceptance month I have actually a fun story and some pictures I wanted to show you guys do, 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 do. Gotta keep an eye on this little chat thing here. Occasionally, if I click off of it, it freezes it on the screen. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Uh, David, it was all right. Saturday went to Nebraska Furniture Mart with Chris, and then Sunday went to church due to uh, due to tech, and then went to my family for Easter. Awesome. Yeah, we did our. Uh, uh, family uh, Easter stuff on um, Saturday um, and then Sunday me and my husband just stayed home all day made taco bowls and played Baldur's Gate <laughs> let's see let's see also I slap floor help help me out I'm a little lost I slap floor what is that <laughs> I'm missing some context. <laughs> Hello, souls. Welcome to the chat. How are you doing this evening and how was your weekend? I know we talked a little bit on Discord. Had a little technical difficulty, but we're here and I have some fun stuff planned for this evening before I start drawing. <laughs> hey 
Shelby, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for hanging with me in my little corner of the galaxy. I have some fun stuff to talk about today. Let's see, David, uh, uh, that's for me to know and you guys to figure out. <laughs> figure, can't figure it out here in a bit, I will explain. Okay, you might have to sometimes, uh, there might be a joke or thing that's going on that I, I, I am not aware of and goes over my head. Uh, souls. Oh, my weekend was good. I had a nice Easter with my family, and I got WarioWare for DS, which is so much fun. Yeah, heck yeah. My husband loves the WarioWare games. Um, I'm hoping maybe sometime this month to do the game night. I'm thinking, again, Friday night. I will let you guys know as soon as I have that set up. I need to do a test uh, stream uh, to make sure everything works, as I have not uh, done a gaming stream yet. Mm -hmm. uh, for those just joining, um, I thought it'd be fun uh, to start off with a little brief history of what the heck is April Fool's Day, where did it come from, you know, how, like, it's been around, apparently, I, I, I looked up, it's on the History Channel website, so I'm hoping it's <laughs> legit information, um, and then, um, it's just like a brief history, and then I would like for you guys to tell me about your, uh, any fun April Fool's days that you've done, like pranks or things that have happened to you. And then after that, um, it is actually also not a joke, but the, uh, <laughs> the start of Autistic Acceptance Month. And I thought I'd share a little bit of my journey with you guys and, um, a very particular character before this blue alien you see in front of you. Um, I had another alien OC. Uh, and we'll get to that here shortly. Letting people come in. Ah, nice crowd. Nice crowd already. <laughs> um, also, cross fingers. As long as nothing crazy happens, um, hopefully we'll start being able to... Uh, bleh, I'm tripling over, tripping over my words. Um, I got a quote um, and um, getting some ideas down. Um, and once we're kind of paying paid off this computer a little bit more i will be upgrading my vtuber hopefully by the end of the year so cross fingers send positive thoughts and vibes um i'm really excited for that so um so we're we're gonna prepare for that and uh save up for that but the computer has to be paid off first uh but that does remind me uh lady pixel heart again who made my vtuber um she is open for commissions currently go grab one before they're gone I think she says she has eight spots left. <laughs> hey. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. Let's Indeed, positive vibes. Yep, yep, yep. I I love the one that I have right now, but I've just been so excited to kind of see it more in motion and uh, just kind of expand. Because right now you're only seeing half of me. <laughs> so I'm kind of doodling some stuff on the iPad to kind of get an idea of kind of extend. Uh, the wonderful outfit that I already have here, and um, I really like our, a lot of what's already here. So we're just gonna expand upon it. Expound. <laughs> okay. All right, so more yet. Damn, this my iPad is already at ninety-five percent. I better start drawing and getting going here. All right, so um, let me. Um, I couldn't quite get the um, what was it? The uh. uh, uh the, the screen to pull up separately uh, for this article, but uh, if you guys are ready, I am going to start reading the history of April Fool's Day. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to put on my uh, one second. This one? Nope. No, not that one. Which one is it? Uh, I thought it was this one. Nope. Why aren't my toggles working? One second, guys. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. All right. So, oh, there we go. I thought it'd be kind of funny if I use this toggle for April Fool's Day. Ah. Okay. So, let me pull up the article really quick. I'm shaking like a leaf. Okay. So, here we go. It, uh, per the historychannel.com. History.com. Alright, um, let's see. Uh, let me turn it down a little bit. Um, where should I start? Um, April Fool's Day, occurring on April 1st each year, has been celebrated uh, for several centuries by different cultures. 
Though its exact origins remain a mystery, April Fool's Day traditions include playing hoaxes or practical jokes on others, often yelling April Fool's at the end to clue in the subject of the April Fool's Day prank, just in case you did not know you were being pranked. Um, while its exact history is shrouded in mystery, uh, the embrace of April Fool's Day jokes by the media and major brands has ensured the unofficial holiday's long life. So, let me see here. Nope, don't play the video. We don't need a video. Okay, so, the origins of April Fool's Day. Uh, some historians speculate that April Fool's Day dates back to 1582. I, when I read that, I'm like, are you, really? That's crazy. That's so long ago. Um, when France switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. As called for by uh, say as called for by the Council of Trent in 1563, uh, in the Julian calendar, calendar as in the Hindu calendar, the new year began with the spring equinox around April 1st. Uh, people who were slow to get to news or failed to recognize that the start of the new year had moved to January 1st and continued to celebrate it during the last week of March through April 1st became the butt of jokes and hoaxes, and were called April Fools. These pranks included having paper fish placed on their backs, being referred to as the the poison de avril. I cannot, I cannot read. <laughs> it's French. Uh, poison de avril. <laughs> April fish. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it had it in parentheses. It's April fish. A oh, that's funny. April fish. April first. Ha! <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, said to symbolize a young, easily caught fish as a gullible person. Oh man. Okay, all right. Um, historians have also linked April Fool's Day to festivals such as Hilaria. Is that oh Latin for joyful? Yes, hilarious, great. Uh, which was celebrated in ancient Rome and at the end of March by followers of the cult of Cybele. Uh, it involved people dressing up in disguises and mocking fellow citizens and even magistrates, as it's said to be inspired by the Egyptian legend, legend of Isis, Osiris, and Seth. There is also speculation that April Fool's Day was tied to the uh, vernal equinox, or the first day of spring in the northern hemisphere, when Mother Nature fooled people with changing, unpredictable weather. That sounds like the Midwest. A <laughs> uh, little bit more here. Uh, April Fool's Day spread throughout Britain during the 18th century. In Scotland, the tradition became a two-day event, starting with hunting the, the gawk. <laughs> G-O-W-K in which people were sent on phony errands. Uh, Gok is a word for cuckoo bird. Cuckoo! Uh, a symbol for a fool. Uh, birds get a bad rap for being the dumb ones. They're some of the smartest creatures. Um, and followed by uh, Taily? Taily? Taily Day? Which involved pranks played on people's dairy airs. Yes, I read that, folks. Dairy air, such as pinning fake tails or kick me signs on them. They'd be playing with their booties, I guess. Let's see. A um, little bit, uh, last little bit here. Um, <laughs> in modern times, people have gone to great lengths to create elaborate April Fool's Day hoaxes. Newspaper, radio, and TV stations and websites have participated in the April 1st tradition of reporting outrageous fictional claims that have fooled their audience. In 1957, the BBC reported that Swiss farmers were experiencing a record spaghetti crop and showed footage of people harvesting noodles from trees. <laughs> In 1985, Sports Illustrated uh, Illustrated writer George Plimpton, that's a that's a fun name, uh, tricked many readers when he ran a made-up article about a rookie pitcher named Sid Finch who could throw a fastball over 168 miles per hour. Uh, and then 1992, Public Radio, uh, National Public Radio, ran a spot with former President President Richard Nixon, saying he was running for president again. Only it was an actor, not Nixon. <laughs> and the segment was all an April Fool's Day prank that caught the country by surprise. Woo, that's that's a spicy prank right there. Uh, and let's see, last one here. In 1996, Taco Bell, the fast food chain, uh, duped people when it announced it agreed to purchase Philadelphia's Liberty Bell and intended to rename it the Taco Liberty Bell. I don't remember this. Um, in 1998, after Burger King's advertised left uh, advertised a left-handed Whopper, scores of clueless customers requested the fake sandwich. Google notoriously hosts an annual April Fool's Day prank that included everything from telepathic search to the ability to play Pac-Man on Google Maps. <laughs> For the average trickster, 
there's always the class classic April Fool's Day prank of covering the toilet with plastic wrap or swapping the contents of sugar in salt containers. So there we go. Woo. Oh, that was a bit of a read. But yeah, yep, it's been a, been around for a while and we kind of people just kind of like all over the place, like all over the country and all over the world kind of like had their own renditions of April Fool's. So um, go back to boop. But I'm actually curious to hear uh, from you guys what April Fool's Day pranks have you done or have you had done to you? Um, I had a uh, long, it was a long time ago. My my ex boy or yeah, my ex boyfriend fiance. Uh, I woke up one morning and I live in the Midwest, and you know corn is everywhere, and he just decided to put cobs of corn everywhere, and I mean everywhere. I opened the fridge, obviously cob of corn. I opened the mailbox, another cob of corn. I opened my car door, corn, so much corn. (laughs) Oh man, yeah, yes, yes. Please tell me um, some of your favorite pranks or have you ever been pranked? Yeah, that was really interesting when I read it. I'm glad it was just like a short little brief. To me, that was pretty short. A little brief history on April Fool's Day. But, um... Yeah, I'm trying to think if I had anything. Have I ever played another prank? Ah... <sighs> All my my husband tells me all the time his like it doesn't even have to be April Fool's Day, but his dad just constantly, constantly played pranks on him and his younger brother. <laughs> um, you know, they'd be like showering and he would dump like a cold glass of ice water <laughs> on them while they're trying to take a hot shower. Uh let me see here. Ooh. Uh, David, one prank that almost got me fired. I think it was Walmart or Dollar Tree. (laughs) Anyways, I said I was not coming into work that day since I didn't feel good. I was on my way when I called. (laughs) I think it kind of just depends on your workplace. Like if, um, I'm pretty like, like I'm real like good with everybody and like we joke around a lot and we're pretty close. So I think if I were to have done that, uh, they would have probably laughed at it, but also been a little upset. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty good though. I I, I think that's pretty good. As long, um, it it did almost get you fired, huh? Did they like write you up or what happened with that? <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Um, yeah, this is one of those mean ones, so don't don't do this one. Um, my my brother always gave me such a hard time <laughs> when I was little, so I uh, was trying to get back at him, and I think it was around Halloween time, and we were down at the park, and I had gotten one of those uh, blood capsules from the the uh, like the costume and uh, theatrical department, and I had. I had uh, pretended to fall and get hurt and like busted it open in my mouth and I looked like I was bleeding and he was freaking out so bad. But yeah, don't do not do those kind of pranks, but he, um, he was kind of asking for it because he was a butthead. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Souls. Hmm. I, I did one prank uh, in April uh, was two, was uh, years ago. I gave my friend a gift. It was a fake mop box, but a truce, a nice gift card since he was being a wonderful friend. It was a fun prank. Aw, that's cute. I like that. <laughs> like, I feel bad for anybody that has a birthday on April 1st. Like, man, you know, Christmas is bad. Fourth of July can be kind of bad. Kind of gets outshadowed by, you know, the holiday itself. But April Fool's, you just have to, like probably constantly tell everybody do not prank me on my birthday do not prank me on my birthday please uh let's see david no write-ups thankfully but they asked me to never do anything like that again (laughs) oh man Uh, i don't know walmart kind of deserves it sometimes but not necessarily the employees (laughs) oh that's awesome so uh yeah so i just wanted to like kind of talk about that um I try, um, I like to do harmless pranks if I can. Um, I think my husband told me another thing his dad would do is that he 
would do something with an air horn, just constantly <laughs> just scaring them with the air horn. Sure, they have PTSD from from all that. Because yeah, uh, my husband has a hard time opening up one of those Pillsbury uh, can like biscuit cans. I mean, I do too a little bit, but. <laughs> I think his dad traumatized both of them. <laughs> oh, all right. So, um, yeah. So, awesome. I, I, I thought that'd be fun. Um, the next thing I really wanted to uh, get into was, yeah, you know, today marks the first day of Autism Awareness Month. And funny thing, uh, not funny, but um, I always say I, I am late diagnosed. I didn't get diagnosed until uh, I was, what was it? I was 20, it was 2021. I, I was 31 years old. Yeah, yeah, I was 31, and um, I happened to get diagnosed in the month of autism acceptance. So, <laughs> kind of funny how all that happens. And then um, that same that same month, I got married to my husband. And by that point, um, I had heard the diagnosis, and it was very not, not like super surprising. It's like the whole process of getting assessed was very like a lot of imposter syndrome but the doctor that I had thankfully very kind and she uh I think I've mentioned a few times very uh passionate about diagnosing uh you know if you know women on the spectrum and for the longest time I really just thought I was uh, let's see here let's see all in hello welcome to the chat thanks for joining me in my little corner of the galaxy how you doing da silva welcome to the chat bum, bum. welcome to the chat bum, bum. Um, we just got done talking about the history of april fools um so if, if you'd like to uh hear about that um after the stream i would, that's probably the first thing i talked about let's see uh going to step away for a few minutes no worries no worries um we are currently on the topic of Autism and Acceptance Month, and briefly just uh, talked about when I was diagnosed. I was uh, age 31 during the month of Autism Acceptance, and then I also got married that same month. And by the time I got married, it was I had a, my wedding dress was like rainbow. Um, oh, you're very welcome, to Silva. Thank you so much for coming to the chat. Um, do, do, make sure this one second the chat's still working over here okay um and i thought it would be fun today to kind of revisit um a character that i had created long before i uh, received the diagnosis um and as you know i've always felt alien so that's why you see one before you but i had another alien oc long before jiffy came along and i wanted to talk about her today so let's see here do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Let me get rid of this. There we go. So, um, I have four pictures today. I actually have more drawings of her. I usually um, don't... I probably should draw more fan art of myself, but um, I tend to like never draw the same thing twice. But there was just something about this character. This is the very first rendition of her, and uh, a friend of mine I uh, drew uh, this background. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, the I think I did the coloring. I can't remember. I think I colored it myself and I drew it myself. And um, it, yeah, she looks a little. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, this is Ekna. Uh, the E K N A H. Hello, David. Uh, we just moved on to. Um, I wanted to share a personal uh, character of mine. Uh, way before I knew I was neurodivergent and before you see this blue alien in front of you now, I had a purple one. I think I st I drew her, gosh, I had to have been, oh gosh, 22, 23. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, my friend drew the background and I drew this and so the, the concept behind her is obviously she's very alien looking. Um, I made her kind of insect looking um it's something you know insects spook me a lot and i was like i want to try to draw something that i'm kind of more afraid of or uncomfortable with in a form that would you know i can kind of relate to um and i love the color purple i'm wearing purple on my vtuber right now <laughs> i love purple and orange so you see the purple and orange on my outfit 
She also is purple and orange. All the colors that you're seeing on my current VTuber uh, stemmed from this character, besides the blue skin. <laughs> so this is the original incarnation, and um, and you'll see in every single picture she does not have a mouth. And I was trying to make her really look alien, you know, um, like the greys or, you know, um, the whole thing with her is she's more, she has the ability to feel people's emotions and kind of like uh, telepathically connect. And that was just like a subtle way of like, I felt like I could feel everyone's emotions all the time, but I couldn't communicate with people. I still struggle. Um, but this was like a subconscious of like, I, I don't feel like I belong and I don't, um, I, I feel like I can't understand people or talk to people or connect. So here's the first rendition of her. Let me go move this one. Um, whoopsies. Eh. Nope. Oop. I'm going out of order. Ignore it. Oop. Let me get rid of that and that there we go okay so this is the second time i drew her kind of the same thing kind of figuring out like how i want her to look um i basically made her like a hybrid between like a beetle and an ant um yes pretty much like mantis i had no idea who mantis was until very recently so yes very similar um and the, the big thing was always not having a mouth and not you know, feeling like I couldn't speak uh, for many, not just like just speaking with people, but like um, I felt like uh, even a lot growing up, like I annoyed people when I would talk too much or I would kind of ramble on about things. Um, and I have till this day, so it kind of annoyed people, but I have found wonderful people in my life that accept me. <laughs> I'm kind of an info dumper, but I've been trying to be better about listening more and and uh whatnot but a lot of the ways that um people on the spectrum tend to connect is by sharing experiences uh, because that's that is usually not everyone is it's a spectrum after all um that's the way they uh, like to connect and communicate because that's the only way i knew how <laughs> uh so we have that one turn that off and then uh here is the third rendition of her you know just trying to fill out like oh what would her planet look like and i was kind of getting into you know using my colored pencils and um let's see here but yeah just uh this is the next rendition of her and it kind of just kept going and then um there was a couple instances of like what i would call a crash uh for me as a person and one of them was um <clears throat> and you know, it was around 20 it was like 2016 and again i've already kind of went through uh that it's on my instagram page uh back before i um decided to do vtubing so um went through a really hard time in my life and i you know i felt like i had lost everything i didn't know who i was and i was basically starting from scratch and i just from as i was coming you know starting my self-discovery journey again that's where the instagram account came from and that's why you see me here today my art ended up being the way that i found myself and this character right here is the start of it long before <laughs> as i said the diagnosis so um the, by the time um you know i was i was kind of i was really struggling and really struggling um i just I remember one of the first things I did for my Instagram account was I have all these unfinished pictures and you're going to see one of those today. Um, I like um, challenged myself to finish all these pictures just to show that I can. You know, my, I was very insecure about my art uh, skills, which sometimes I still am. Um, but that was the challenge I did for myself. And then um, I remember that being like a really big push emotionally for me and then that's where this drawing came from i had i don't do, i didn't do backgrounds very often especially scenery um there's still some perspective things wrong with this one but this is probably one of my favorite drawings of her um and just more and more i just felt more and uh confident on like what this who this character was and um and then it was not until another oh let's see that was 20, probably 2017 or so. I finished that. 18, 19, 20. About five years more later, 
is when I got diagnosed, but that's when I hit my second burnout, uh, where all of a sudden I felt like I couldn't function every day. My brain literally could not do what it was doing, and it was terrifying because I didn't know what was wrong. Um, and <clears throat> eventually um, I was able to get insurance long enough uh yay being in america uh long enough that i was able to get some serious help um i had done before that um like seven six seven years of just therapy so on on top of like even before the diagnosis my art and then talk therapy has helped me tremendously um so i was able the first thing i did when i got the um it was just Medicaid, you know, because um, I didn't know I qualified for it <laughs> for the longest time. Um, I went and got a formal, like, uh, psychological diagnosis, and I was very fortunate. I had a friend who had just got diagnosed by the same doctor, recommended her to me. And to say it was the most, like, affirming thing for me as far as, like, accepting myself, um, it was life-changing. Um, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of uh, like, oh man, now everything makes sense. But then, as a lot, um, as, as many that I've read, uh, comes the anger and the frustration. Like, how did I get missed? You know, how did nobody notice? And unfortunately, I and my parents' generation, and even you know, way before then, it you just don't talk about it. Mental health took a really big backseat for a long time, so there's just been this explosion of people realizing, oh, that's what's going on. Because I always thought I was just a weirdo. Um, I, I didn't, I, I always feel like an alien from another planet. And so the, the, the alien that you're seeing right now is an evolution of this one right here, Ekna. This is who I ended up like, this is me, more or less, you know, how I feel on the inside after years of, you know, the therapy and the diagnosis. And I know not everyone can afford the diagnosis. It is very expensive. Um, so I feel fortunate um, that I have it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to uh, share her with you today because um, that's actually what I'm going to work on. Let me pull it up here. Oh, I never got this on here. Give me one second. Oh, wrong one. Nope, that's me. Where is it? Oop, this one? Nope, wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Ha ha. That works. Okay. Let me pull her up here. Um, and yeah, right before I get to that, I wanted to show you guys where I'm. I'm, I'm still um, struggling with the the Sailor Moon picture, so I will come back to that one. But. Uh, Boozette is almost done. Hello, hello, Berry Pumpkin. Welcome to the chat. How are you doing? <laughs> um, see here. But yeah. Um, if you're if you're just tuning in, um, we're talk we talked about April Fool's Day, and it is. Let's see here. Berry Pumpkin. I'm hungry for a Five Guy Burgers or fries and a drink. <laughs> that sounds good. I had pizza for dinner, specifically Sprite. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, we talked about April Fools and it is Autism Acceptance Month and I just kind of delved into my uh, experience on the spectrum a little bit. And uh, so if you, if you want to hear anything about that, uh, feel free uh, to, um, it's just a few minutes back on, on the video. I talked for a good, I think, uh, 10 or 10 minutes or so about it. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'm glad you're doing good. That's awesome. Mondays are kind of a, sh a slog for, for most people. Let's see here. So yeah, uh, here's Boozette. She is almost done. I have been working very di diligently on this one. Uh, let's see here. When we last communicated, I did not have a job. Now I have job. Awesome. Congratulations. That's awesome. Now I have That's awesome. Congrats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, David. So yeah, I slap floor anyone get or shall I explain <laughs> I think you're gonna have to explain dude <laughs> uh, yeah and congrats on the job Barry Pumpkin mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. all right so yeah um 
Boozette's coming along. I've been uh, working on her eyes. She's all blushy now, and I got this fun pattern on her outfit. Absolutely love it. Um, I just have to do like uh, some shading and some highlighting and then add the ghost and then she'll be pretty much done. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but yeah, so today what I thought I would do is start in, in honor of my uh, original Neurodivergent OC, I wanted to work on this old picture that I started and never finished. Let's see here. David, I slap floor equals April f oh, oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> oh no. That that was that was pretty bad, David. That's that's <laughs> Oh man, I f <sighs> that darn dyslexia. It didn't come in clutch when I needed it to. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Not, nah, nah, but I really do have that job. Yeah, congratulations on your job. I know, I know some finding a job is like a scary thing nowadays. Um, let's see here. Yeah, gosh, I made her really cross eyed, didn't I? Um, but yeah, I thought it'd be fun to work on this today. Um, in, in celebration of Autism Acceptance Month and dedication or an like an ode to my old OC. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um, okay, okay. I think, okay. W what, uh, it, do you want to tell us what job it is that you got, Barry Pumpkin? <laughs> I have a feeling I'm walking into something, but I'll let you, I'll let you have it. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, first off, what I'm gonna do, let's go. Where is uh, sketching? Here we go. I can go into that. Oopsies. Turn this down. Turn the opacity down a little bit. And let's see if we can correct a few things. I think I was on the right track uh, with this picture, but a little off. Okay. Um. Yeah, and if who um, anyone that's just joining in, if you have a, f a fun April Fool's Day prank uh, that was played on you or you uh, was, was played on someone else, uh, let me know about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also did get my new... Uh, I got a stand from my iPad to hopefully make it a little easier to uh, draw. Uh, let's see here. Nah, it's just a normal job at the Humane Society with the doggos in the- the gatos? You mean the catos? <laughs> Are there gators? I'd be- I'd be- I wouldn't be surprised. They have, uh, where- where we're at, we have, uh, like, farm animals uh, sometimes end up in, uh, our Humane Society. We need an Easter Fool's Day. <laughs> Oopsie. Let's see, pronounced like Gato. Uh, I'm walking in. Hold on. Oh, Spanish for cat. I am so sorry. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh, man. I am so sorry. Oop. Oh, Gato. Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. I am a, a big bird person, and I've been kind of like on the lookout for uh, any birds that kind of show up at the Humane Society before I get uh, purchase one. Mm -hmm. 
I think in this picture I originally was trying to um, make her I thought it'd be fun to kind of draw her on her home planet and so like normally she's pretty she's like very tall very lanky but I wanted to like make her look like she's pretty small like a fairy and uh, compared to her uh, jungle surroundings uh, don't worry it's one of the only words I know oh okay I gotcha I thought maybe you were saying Kato and it accidentally uh, put a G there. <laughs> oh, speaking of birdies, uh, my, uh, my, my, my father-in-law got, uh, some little chickens, little baby chicks, and so we got to, uh, we got to hold them, and, and, and I, I haven't held a bird in so long. <laughs> it was, it was a fun experience, and my husband's never, uh, held a bird before, so it was really fun and cute. They're just so sweet. <laughs> okay, so what did I do here? These are. This is one of those drawings where I was like figuring out anatomy. I was kind of getting it, but I'm, I'm still a long ways off. All right. All right. She's supposed to be looking kind of back. Hmm. I just feel like I might have to talk with one of my friends about it, but I don't. Oopsies. Don't want to make it look like her neck is broken. <laughs> Oopsies. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think the last time I held a baby chick, oh, whoops, I don't even have the right, there we go. <laughs> I'm drawing, I swear. Um, the last time I held a baby chick was down at Blazing's Farm, which was sometime last year. Yeah, they're so cute. It, it just like, I would have probably never put the baby down. <laughs> they're, it's just so sweet. And they were, he, uh, the little, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a girl, uh, but she was falling asleep in my hand and I'm just like, oh my God. I want to take you home and just, just cuddle you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Alright. Whoopsies. Sorry if I'm moving the canvas a lot. Okay. Yeah, like she's got some derpy eyes here, but I do like the size of the one on the right. here is kind of uh he's like kind of an ant a combination of an ant and a uh, an a uh, beetle Those topics were fun for you. Um, I uh, still on a, a long road of self-discovery, but I will say I'm really grateful for my art because I've, as I've found through all these characters, I found a little bit more of myself. Yeah. 
don't know what I'm trying to draw this so perfect. This is just the sketch layer. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, souls. Um, what are you guys up to for the rest of the week? Got any fun plans? Do, do, do. Yeah, I originally, um, I was, like, really going hard into the alien motif, and she has, like, big, black, uh, expressionless eyes, which is very reminiscent of some of the- <laughs> I do have a, uh, the resting, uh, bee face sometimes, and it looks like I'm not happy, but I'm just- that's just my face. <laughs> I get frustrated when people tell me to smile more. It's just like I smile when it's, you know, when it's funny, when something's like funny. <laughs> Uh, oh wait, uh, there we go. Uh, David, uh, Wednesday was up in the air uh, on if it would be fun or not. Um, let's see here. Uh, potential, oh no, potential jury duty. Oh no. I've been summoned for one of those and then they canceled it, thankfully. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Barry, uh, no plans. I wonder when I get my paycheck. Gotcha. Uh, souls, uh, I just relax and work and also uh, finish Persona 3 Reload. Fun. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. <laughs> I'm probably, I've been pretty, uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me as far as getting some art stuff done because I'm really determined I need to get some, uh, these pieces finished so I can get them on my website and, uh, then I need to, um, um, send out, uh, files and try to get some prints and see, uh, how I want to like get my you know like get my inventory where I want them printed all that stuff hmm. uh, got a long got a long road here but uh, we've been I've been making some pretty good progress I think I see what the problem is. I went a little too high. There we go. Yes, I'm like that. Yep. Let me see. I haven't updated her in a long time, so maybe I need to um, change her eye shape a little bit. I wasn't sure um, when I upgrade my VTuber if I should kind of go back this route or if you guys kind of like the way my eyes are now. Uh, Joshua Solid, hey, welcome to the chat. How are you? Thanks for uh, joining me in my little corner of the galaxy. Uh, we're doing pretty good in here. Um, we, we had a little segment on uh, April Fool's Day and the history behind it. Uh, and we talked briefly about Autism Acceptance Month. And um, I'm actually working on an old OC. Uh, before the alien that you see in front of you, this was the original alien. Her name is Ekna. So, um, way before I was diagnosed, um, I always felt alien, and that's where she came from. <laughs> okay. We want it like that. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, 
this what we're working on? How are you doing? How's your week treating you so far? A little better. I always get, like, really focused in on the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. Draw. Now her antennas are definitely not in the right spot. I think her head is a little... Yeah, maybe more like that. Do, 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 do. Mm, let's see here. Mm, I already got seven of that. Do, do, do. Alright. Oh. The chat's still moving. Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're new here, um, I, I try to make sure if I see new people to uh, give a heads up. If you're new here, uh, my name is Jiffy. I'm a late diagnosed autistic and I've used my art to find who I am. And that's what we're kind of talking about today. Thank you, thank you for joining me in my little corner of the galaxy. One, uh, that's actually one of the reasons I made you know this YouTube channel and uh, my page at all I wanted to kind of give a little like a little safe space for other fellow neurodivergents or anyone that just kind of feels a little lost be like a little pit stop Let's see here. just to kind of chill for a little while okay, I think it needs to come out or give me one second Erase the switch layer am I on? There we go. There we go. Get rid of this. Do do do. Da, 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 da. Oh. oh, let's see here. Um, I'm doing well. Tomorrow's my second day. Um, second day at my second day of my dream job internship. Awesome. 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 Uh, where are you, is it okay, if it, you don't have to tell us, but where are you, where are you inter intern, what's like your dream job? What was the dream scenario? And if, if you don't want to share that, that is a-okay. Oops, 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 oops. There we go. Grab the wrong layer. Wrong layer. There we go. I think that looks better. Okay. Let's merge this down. Gunsmithing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's quite the... My, uh, my, uh, sorry. My brother-in-law is, uh, taking welding classes. So I, I can only imagine how difficult gunsmithing is. Uh, let's see here. Berry pumpkin. Oh, yeah. I interact with the dogs, too. Awesome. <laughs> One sec. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a cup of water really quick, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, wrong layer. <laughs> uh, let me get that off. There we go. <laughs> well, I guess uh, while we're on the topic of like characters that, uh, you know, whether it's an OC or maybe it's a character you grew up with, are there any characters that you really related to uh, growing up? 
A lot of mine ended up being robots <laughs> um, later on in life, uh, which is super funny. To, uh, robots or alien, kind of all the kind of same deal there. Okay, maybe that's what needs to happen there. Hmm. I'm kind of figuring some stuff out in real time with some of these drawings, like uh, the anatomical errors and whatnot. So these uh, these projects have been very good for me, but also very frustrating. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, that no, that doesn't. Wait, no, nope, that does not look right. Let me see here. Okay. Kind of has, I think I like gave her, uh, what was it? What does it look like? Uh, which I can't remember. It's a certain, I think Akira Toriyama did a lot of like ears like this on his alien characters, and I think that's what I was imitating. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Josh, uh, the guys who own the shop are huge Warhammer and Halo nerds. They have game night once a week, and they even have a vending machine that sells Magic the Gathering cards. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had a message. Okay. Oh, that sounds fun. My, uh, my husband plays Warhammer and Magic the Gathering. I play a little bit too. He taught me how to play. It is quite the game. All right, I'm getting focused on this ear. Yeah, I kind of drew her ear like uh, all of, a lot of the alien characters in a uh, Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. I think I need to make this part a little bigger. Nope, nope. At Rip, Rip, by the way, Rip Kiratoriyama. <laughs> I grew up with uh, Dragon Ball Z when I was uh, in elementary school. That was all I drew for like a hot minute too. <laughs> and I haven't drawn a man in so long. But that's all I used to draw when I was a kid. But that and Pokemon. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh... Reason, yeah, yeah, thank you, Barry Pumpkin. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I, uh, I took a little inspiration from that. Maybe, you know, oh, I think I know. Maybe her ear, oh, her ear is kind of, well, I, she's an alien. I guess it doesn't matter, but I think her ear is sitting a little low on her head. Do, do, do. Let's fix that. This is what's been great about um, doing digital is I'm in real time able to like, since I don't always have to like redraw things, I can just kind of select a certain thing and move it around, tilt it a certain way so I can and figure out why it looks wrong in real time. <laughs> I don't know if that's the most uh, efficient way of learning to draw better, but it definitely has been helping. Let's see here. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, David, uh, there's a meme I saw the other day. I always thought I would grow up to be Belle, but turns out I was the old lady saying six eggs are too expensive. <laughs> oh man, I age myself on here way too much, but I am extremely young at heart. But you know what? I'm an alien. I can live a long time. That's that's my canon. Age is just a number, they say. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Mm, don't mind me, I'm just... Let's see here. Maybe it's like that? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Um, I think... I think that looks... Hold on. <laughs> so you gotta deal with me with this, as I... Uh, and something's just slightly off. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <Grr. 
uh, let's see here. Um, Josh, I found out about six months ago that I was autistic. I was misdiagnosed my entire life with ADHD. Oh. Well, I'm happy that you're able to get uh, a pro uh, like the the correct diagnosis for you. Um, I have I have ADHD and autism, so they have a lot of uh, or they have a lot of like overlapping uh, things. So, um, but back um, in the day, um, it's just autism was bad. Nobody. Hey, Jay, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? And happy Easter, belated Easter, and happy autistic. Uh, aware, uh, sorry, except it's about there we go. <laughs> um, let me, um, sorry, I got my, uh, my brain all jumbled there. Um, yeah, so back in, back in the day, I'm aging myself again. Um, yeah, they just, you know, having autism, bad. And, um, girls, on the other hand, um, they, they mask, so, they mask so well socially sometimes that a lot of the times they go missed and... You know, they just gave my my brother ADHD, but he's clearly on the spectrum and has a lot of difficulty. And uh, and there just wasn't a lot of help from my my mom either. Like no one, no one really wanted to help her or give her any kind of guide. Like just she didn't have any support in that in that uh, side of things. Um, yes, yes, uh, all neurodiv uh, neurodivergent folk are welcome here and non non-neurodivergent, non um, but I did want to make a little corner of the galaxy where people on the spectrum um, or a neurodivergent of any kind could come and hang out and maybe learn a few things. Um, I've been very into sharing my journey and my art in hopes that it'll help somebody else. Um, yeah, uh, Jay, if, you, if you're just tuning in, um, we're actually working on an old uh, alien OC of mine. Um, let me really quick... Just to cat, I won't go over everything, but uh, this was my original alien OC that I created before I knew I was autistic. Her name is Ekna, um, and she's 100% autistic coded, and I had no idea. <laughs> so um, you might have seen me post her a long time ago. I know you've been following me for a while, uh, but yeah. So I just thought it'd be fun uh, in uh, in lieu of it being the first day of Autism Acceptance Month, that I would just uh, work on an old picture of her that I never finished. So that's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, what would she look like if I gave her a mouth? <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> that was that was not good. Yeah, she. Wait, hold on. She's not happy. I did that. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, do, do, do. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, let me finish my thought. Uh, uh, back. Sorry, I get I get jumbled up. Uh, I'm trying to keep make sure I'm ta uh, answering questions in order or messages. Um, yeah. So there, my my brother only got diagnosed with ADHD because it's like when you get diagnosed with you know autism, that was like ooh bad. No, you know you don't want that. And I I always feel terrible for the kids like. Um, that you know it can you you know I, I know being a parent's hard with an with uh, a neurodivergent child but can you imagine what the neurodivergent child is going through and I always felt again alien so I was just always felt like an outcast girls did not like me <laughs> growing up I kind of that's why I you know I really feel you know the non-binary sense in me because I gender norms I, I get them but at the same time on on a deeper level, I just kind of don't because uh, at, at the end of the day, we're just all trying to exist here. And like, why? I don't know. I, I would do a lot of boyish things when I was little, and I, you know, I think farts are funny, or you know, um, I would like things that boys would like, or would do something that maybe a boy would do that um, uh, the girls would find weird. Um, I didn't get invited to a lot of. Uh, birthday parties i think i got invited to one and i think i i only and she, I, she's still my friend today uh she was in the chat last week um i only had like one long-term friend uh from when i was like a child and uh we both found out we're both neurodivergent what <laughs> shocker right <laughs> it's like oh that's why we get along <laughs> um so but you know um it is what it is sometimes of course i hate using that that phrase it's something it's it's it does it does suck 
um, but uh, by finding myself um, through my art and through you know, lots of therapy um, and uh, what was it? Uh, sorry, um, my art and therapy and the diagnosis. I've I've come to accept a lot about myself and. I love all the alien parts about myself. Um, I still struggle a lot sometimes. Um, I feel like I say the wrong thing, wrong time, wrong place kind of thing. Um, it, it, it's really sad and it frustrates me. Um, and I, 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 yeah, <laughs> there's communicating's one of, uh, oh, uh, let's, uh, let me get, sorry, I'm rambling. Let me get caught up on some of these messages here. Um, David, I'm non-autistic, but a lot of my friends happen to be. However, I have my own struggles. Hey, that is totally fine. Everyone is welcome here. Um, absolutely everyone. If you feel, you just need a place to stop by and not feel, you know, just kind of feel like you're hanging out and got people around. No, you know, no judgments here. If anyone is judgy, I'm kicking you. <laughs> Um, Jay, I have always thought the Kirby Fairy was your first one, but that one is cute as well. Yeah! Yeah, so, um, let's see, uh, uh the, the, so, yeah, the VTuber that you see right now, Jay, uh, she is the culmination of years of, like I said, the therapy and, like, finding myself, and this is my alien self, but, you know, more, it's kind of more me. You know, uh, Ekna here does not have a mouth. She's empathetic and uh, tele telepathic, and um, that's how she communicates. And I kind of felt like I, I couldn't communicate with anyone, or I was afraid to talk, because every time I talk, I would talk too much, which I'm even doing on my own stream, and I need to stop that, because I am allowed to talk. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jay, I have been diagnosed with autism since a very young age. Yeah, and um, so there's like the other side of the coin, right? Um, cause I have a friend who I'm very close with, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of boys tend to be diagnosed with, with autism at a young age. And when they were, I would say like, it was, it's kind of like, oh gosh, it's, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. It, it can be good. I wish I would have known I, uh, this way earlier. So I could, I, I knew why I was struggling. Cause I just thought I had to. You know, just I was just weird. And I just had to deal with it. But also, um, everyone in my life, including you know, at school, they kept telling me I had a learning disability. And now the thing about me is, um, I was also born with a physical disability. So they they always made it seem like it was attributed to my uh, physical disability, which is my hearing loss. Um, I was born with both my eardrums not fully formed. And so I couldn't hear very well until about sixth grade. I had two surgeries um, to quote unquote fix my eardrums. Um, and um, so you add hearing loss on top of uh, the you know the autism underneath all that too. I was very like delayed in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, and I just thought I was dumb or uh, you know I just I would try so hard and. Um, if I would have known maybe a little earlier, it could have been really helpful. But as I was saying on that flip side of that, you know, sometimes when you're diagnosed really early, the help that you were getting wasn't really helpful. A little condescending, I've been told. You kind of get like treated like, I don't know, like they need to fix you or change you instead of working with you. And so it's kind of, I think just, uh, I think a lot of uh, psychological, like, med like, there. I'm sorry, diagnosing and all that is has come really far, and I'm hoping that that treatments are like not treatments, but to help autistic f people feel like they, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Like, and people should like learn ways to adapt. Like, we they, we should help and encourage because there's so many talented people I know who are neuro neurodivergent and. Um, a lot of times, as some people say, the world's just not built very, uh, very kindly or very, uh, help, uh, sorry, not built very well for us. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, James, this might be a hot take, but April Fool's Day kind of sucks. No, it's okay. Um, that, uh, we were talking, if you guys had any fun April Fool's Day pranks that you've had done to you or, uh, to others, but like nice ones, uh, I wouldn't mind hearing them. Um, it can, it can be kind of, uh, a pain in the butt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is not, that is an okay, uh, I have, 
I, 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 that is an okay opinion because uh, some people get too carried away with April Fools. But yeah, apparently it's just uh, it has uh, been around for a long time and in, in multiple different countries. Let's see here. Hmm. Maybe I need to. One second, guys. Do 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 do. do. Uh, no, I, I think it'll be okay for now. Let's see here. Um, I was diagnosed- oh, sorry, James, I was diagnosed with ADHD at, like, eight, and wouldn't surprise me if I'm also autistic. Yeah, it's- it's such a- let's see, I feel like I'm having a day dedicated to spreading mis- misinfor- uh, I feel like having a day dedicated to spreading misinformation is unwise. Oh, are we talking about April Fool's Day? Um, uh, just spreading it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was I, I was getting confused on the topic. <laughs> sorry, I could I couldn't tell which one you were referencing. Uh, let's see here, Babs. Uh, agree with James. I hate April Fool's Day. Anthony is autistic, but never officially diagnosed. We're a hundred percent sure Aiden is as well. But when we got him tested, they said he makes eye contact, so he isn't. Oh my gosh, I hate that. So, hot. Here's a hot take. Um, I work in a job that forces me to do eye contact and I hate it. Um, I, I've just done the job so long. It's, it's, it's very robotic of me too. And I really, really don't like it. Uh, towards the end of my shift, it's just so painful. I like, I just, I have pretty big cheeks. So I squint really, I smile really hard, which is also annoying. And then I um, try to hide my eyes because I just can't always look at people directly in the eyes that's that's really frustrating to hear uh, Shelby I'm very sorry about that that's there's there's so much misinf misinformation uh, um, let's see here um, and another one another good one is you know you're not empathetic if you're autistic so here's my two cents I'm extremely empathetic to the point like I can feel people's emotions and it's very stressful on a daily basis, and in the kind of job that I work, I'm, I'm just so tapped out by the end of the day of just everyone's feelings. I can just feel how either angry they are, usually anger. <laughs> um, I've had to, uh, I wear sometimes at work, um, I did for, I probably should go back to wearing them. I wear a button on my shirt next to my name tag that says, I'm autistic and anxious. And also, I sometimes get sensory overloads. And the amount of difference from customers and how they treat me has been, like, night and day. And it sucks. I shouldn't have to, like, wear that for you to just treat me like a decent person. But here we are. <laughs> oh, but, um... Yeah, um, if you're ever, um, back, uh, where I'm at, Shelby, I'd be more than happy to recommend, uh, we have... We have a couple places that do diagnose adults, too. Um, that's how I got my diagnosis. And then a separate doctor, she kind of works for the same place, but I think she's been trying to like do stuff on her own. Uh, but I can give you all that information if you ever would like. Let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. Doo. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, uh, Joshua, uh, you asked earlier uh, about characters we're attached to as a kid. Mine were Jay from, uh, from, Jay from Heat Guy and Jay and Corporal Randall Olin from Pumpkin Scissors, which looking back makes so much sense. Oh, huh. Jay from, I might have to look those characters up. I'm not sure who those are. Randall Olin from Pumpkin Scissors. Hmm. I will have to look that up. You guys are ma uh, teaching me new things all the time and things I haven't heard about. Uh, I uh, We were just uh, watching some YouTubers play through an old Power Rangers the other day and Alfalfa came on there. I was like, oh, that's right. I loved Alfalfa when I was little. I also really loved uh, Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Um, my favorite companion in Fallout is Kiri. <laughs> uh, let's see here, uh, James. Yes, I feel like having a day dedicated to spreading misinformation is unwise. Was referring to April Fool's Day. Thank you. Yeah, I apologize. I was, I was getting, I get mixed up sometimes. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Some autistic people are super empathetic to a degree. I'm not sure most people could fathom. I appreciate you saying that. It's, um, it's especially if people are coming at me pretty, uh, like I just really like I could, 
I don't know how to explain it. But by the end of my shift some days, um, I feel like my whole body's like vibrating. I don't know if that is something you've ever experienced or if that makes sense. Um, and it, um, it takes me so long to recover my, uh, I usually use spoon theory, but it takes me a while to re recover that, uh, that kind of mental energy. And that's one of the reasons I've really stepped back at my job. Um, and I have a wonderful, wonderful husband who has given me the grace to do so. <laughs> um, but that's, that took me, gosh, between just, I don't know, the journey of just like therapy um, and um, then getting the diagnosis like at 30, age 31, I'm almost 35 now. Um, it, it, and just really advocating for myself in the workplace. So I was always like, bullied or uh bosses were very mean to me um took advantage of my inability to like say no i didn't know how to stand up for myself at all for a long time and i finally um I, i've been at my company for 10 years and i was realizing once I, I i moved stores i've been to three different stores now and i that 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 leap of like courage to tr you know start over that that was during that really rough point in my life was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because what I started doing was um, I was like, all right, I'm in a new store. Nobody knows me here. I'm not going to keep letting the same things happen. And it took a long, it took a lot of work. I've been at, I think, my current location for like five years or so. I've made some really great friends and, um, and I've gained a lot of respect from my coworkers that I had never had before. And it, it did take a lot of, and I, I, I had to kind of use the, like I was very useful. Like I, they call me the jack of all trades at work <laughs> because I know how I can do so many things. And I just started slowly realizing what my worth was. And then I just got really fortunate, not, and I know not everyone could be fortunate that I just had I was, I've ended up working more peop with people my age, and I hadn't really had that before, and my boss was actually my, my age, and my current boss is my age. And I just, what I started doing, and once I found out, you know, the, about my autism and everything, I um, was very open with sharing about it and, my, and what I've been through. And um, a lot of the times people, I think a lot of people feel alienated and like they don't fit in and like nobody's listening to them and what I tried to start doing was not only share my experience but listen to everyone um, around me and kind of you know make them feel like they're heard even if it's just a little like oh I'm having a rough day kind of thing I think it's really important uh, to listen to people um, let's see here David, when I was younger, some sometime in grade school, I was tested to see if I had ADHD since I had a really hard time focusing. I still have a hard time focusing, but I apparently don't have ADHD, so I don't know. Well, as as you saw up above uh, with Babs, is I would definitely get a second opinion if you feel like it's you know hindering your life, like you feel like you're really struggling. Um, I would maybe get a second opinion. You know, I, I'm not a doctor. Uh, but I do, I feel, a, a, I can always spot somebody who is neurospicy a mile away now. <laughs> and I get along with most, most just about everybody on the spectrum. Uh, let's see here. James, the worst part about using all your spoons is means you have nothing to eat food with. That is, oh, I'm, can I, can I, can I use that metaphor? I like that. <laughs> That's a good metaphor. I really, really like that. Let's see here. Is her hand, if I were to reach my hand... I think I have, I think I made it look like her arm is like, her hand is like broken and twisted the wrong way. So I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to circle this. This is an, this is an area problem that I'm going to have to sit down and figure out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Joshua. Well, uh, let's see here. James. Uh, this can cause dangerous feedback loops. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Sometimes, if it's been a really bad day at work, which again, thank, thanks to my husband, I'm only there a few days a week now. I think that was the part I was trying to get to is I used to be full time. And if I was on my own, I, I don't, I think I would be in a lot of trouble because I just can't, 
I can't work full time. And I've known that for a long time, but you know, capitalist society and all that, my value and my worth is by what I can, you know, <laughs> produce and all that jazz. And um, it, I was always really just insecure about, I, I work so hard. If, if you know, if anything, no, anybody knows anything about me, I'm one of the hardest working people you'll ever meet. And um, not only was it physically draining my body, but the mental, the mental drain was there and that's where the the second you know break the like the I always help always describe it my my brain broke was just a f the five years was it yeah no hold on it was like 2019 just all of a sudden it's like I couldn't do it and slowly over time thanks to just um a lot of support um at the support I don't feel like I've had in the past um from work and friends and those around me, um, I, I'm at a place uh, now where I don't want to give that, put that much energy into something that you know, especially doesn't make me happy or is not rewarding. Um, and it's it's a really big uh, leap, and it's a scary thing to try to, you know, just do art. You know, I I don't think I'm gonna make a ton of money or anything, but the one thing I always wanted to do was my art. And I just always felt bad that that's what I wanted to do. And I felt like I was like brought up in a society that made me feel bad about it. And I shouldn't feel bad about it. Um, it's something that's always made me happy. And um, I was kind of like trained to not like enjoy it anymore. I, I like stopped for a long time. And in just the two months that I've like been officially streaming consistently, my skill level has already jumped up. <laughs> it's the it's the one thing that always made sense to me. Um, I'm not smart on some things, but like something about art, I've always connected to, and it just made sense. And I think if schools focused on more of, you know, people's uh, kids' strengths like that, they'd be so amazed the things that people what people can do. And when me growing up, in, especially in a school setting, uh, this was like way before like you know, uh, YouTube was just becoming a thing, and you know making uh, a money on YouTube, etc., and being a, con a content creator, which is not a thing yet. And so all my choices were um, basically, you know, I go to go to go take art classes and do like graphic design, and I was like, I don't want to. I don't really want to draw for companies like it the whole thing felt really like stale and like not really creative at least for me because some people do really enjoy uh doing graphic design and we need people like that it just wasn't my thing um but uh, i'm rambling <laughs> but uh, let me get caught up on some comments here uh let's see here Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Um, Joshua's Pumpkin Scissors is an amazing manga that tackles the purple, purple, sorry, purple, purplelessness. Why am I having purposelessness? Thank you. That so that soldiers feel after the war ends and the effect of war on the civilians. Okay, I definitely want to look into that because um, uh, my husband's family, a lot of them are military, and his grandfather that just passed recently was a colonel in the military, and he had just high honors um he was an airman he flew so many planes and they even uh, flew a, a plane over the military cemetery here twice and um it was a very beautiful ceremony um yeah i will look into that that um i i have a family that's also military and a, uh it's it's such an interesting and just a like a very selfless like act to be in the military but and i feel like our our government does not take care of our military men nearly well enough but that's a that's a topic i don't like to get into i try not to get into hot topics on here um lixie uh that's why i carry around a backpack of sporks <laughs> uh let's see here uh james worst part about using all your spoons is it means you have nothing to eat food with is such a metaphor as it is literal i do love cl clever wordplay i think that is hilarious i love that um, 
<laughs> I, I gotta remember that. I'll have to go back through the chat and uh, copy that. Uh, let's see, Josh. Pumpkin Scissors is also an anime, but it was never given a second season. Wow. I feel like that's something they should have like kept going, because... <sighs> That's, man, I love anime. Did I mention that? <laughs> they just cover so many, like, very serious, like, very, like, topics that need to be talked about. Sorry, I gotta spin the canvas really quick here. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, uh, let's see here. James, I wonder if many autistic people enjoy art because it's a way to express emotions that isn't based off regular language. That is very possible. Uh, something I've mentioned um, on my channel before, you know, when I was first like really getting into my drawing and my art again, um, I kind of found out over time, because I, I had a family member just like, oh, draw what you feel. And I'm just like, I don't know how to do that. Like, how do I, how do, I do that? <laughs> Uh, but what I was realizing is uh, I was drawing these characters. Uh, I've talked about them before on my channel. I can go over them again sometime. Uh, but I realized I was drawing characters that were subconsciously... I, I was subconsciously drawing them and they had to do with um, a specific feeling or event that's happened in my life. Um, I usually... So I haven't drawn someone on the more slender side in a while because... I, uh, I always had a lot of body dysphoria, uh, weight problems. Um, I'm a lot healthier now for uh, lots of different reasons, uh, but I didn't, I, I struggled to accept, you know, my body. I know a lot of people do, you know? Um, and I started the first time I drew like a, like a chubbier girl or like a curvier person uh, was, it was really big for me, you know, cause I hadn't done that before. And uh, her name is Cherry. She's gonna, she's little, she's like my, I'm really one of my favorite characters um but i had started with an old it was like a draw this again kind of thing and she originally was just you know your, your typical anime girl kind of very slender very delicately holding a cupcake and then later on i was like you know what if what if she just ate all the cupcakes that I had drawn in the picture? And, you know, lo and behold, that's where uh, the new version of her came from. And she's a lot chubbier and it looks like she's eaten a lot of cupcakes. But you know what? I do like food and I have used eating as like a comfort thing before. I wouldn't, you know, it's not it's not a healthy way of doing things, but it was like a way for me to express that I was having a lot of discomfort in uh feeling sad about how I looked and etc. Uh, let's see here. Do do do. Uh, Lixie, uh, this isn't a problem for you to solve, but then how do we balance having students do stuff they like while also pushing them towards things that they can do as a profession? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't have all the answers, unfortunately, but what I do know is a lot of times when a child, like, really, um, gets excited about something and it isn't an orthodox thing or uh, something that doesn't you know make money or it's just like a I don't know I just feel especially in the creative field I feel like that gets really hounded on a lot um but um I don't I don't have all the answers but I will think about that though how many fingers did I give her one two I gave her did I do the four finger thing I think I did do um, I think, I think even if it doesn't become their profession, ignoring something that they, like, get, get enjoyment out of happens a lot more than not. Um, but again, don't have all the inf don't have all the answers there, but that is something to think about. Okay, that's five fingers, what am I doing? If, uh, if anybody else wants to chime in on that question, they're more than welcome to. If, uh, eh. okay, is that better? Come on. <laughs> Even drawing monster claw hands, I'm still having trouble. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Oopsies. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's see, um, 
Andrew Smith, hello! Welcome to the chat! Thanks for joining me, my little corner of the galaxy. Um, if you haven't been here before, my name is Jiffy. I'm a late diagnosed autistic. We're actually in a fun discussion since it's Autistic um, Acceptance Acceptance Month. Um, um, I've used art to find myself because uh, I've always felt alien, and that's why you see an alien before you. Let's see here. Uh, the see the beauty of the mo uh, monastery schools. Uh, they left the students use their care. Sorry, they let the students use their curiosity and learn the best way they can. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. Uh, let's see here, and welcome, again, welcome to the chat. Thank you for hanging out here. Uh, David, my cousins are currently in the military. I saw one of them a few weeks ago, and they'll be coming back sometime this month. Another cousin just got back from Africa. Yeah, I think, uh, one of the, one of the interesting things about being in the military is just all the, um, all the cool places that you get to see. Here we go. Peace. Flower. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see here. Um, uh, James, the world uh, needs needs curvy people. They give great hugs. I can confirm. I have been told multiple times I am a great hugger. Um, I I love giving I love giving hugs. Let's see here. Yeah, just uh, you know, growing uh, it, gosh, even my my uh, my grandmother-in-law, um, she was you know telling me back you know like in the forties, you know, she was she's military and um, presentate you know, like how you how you present yourself is really big in the military and she was told many times that like she needed to be a certain weight like she's just like the 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 wife you know and. They're like, oh, no, you can't be more than 135 pounds or something like that. And I was just like mortified. <laughs> like that, what, that's not an unhealthy weight, but some people just aren't naturally an exact weight. Like I'm built very different from some of my friends, but we have similar weights, that, you know, but we're built different. Uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, I, I've struggled with body image for a long, long time. And it's, you know, still struggle some days, but I've definitely made a lot of progress. Um, and that's why I decided with my VTuber to, sh you know, show the parts that um, I'm insecure about. I'm not as insecure about them as I used to be, but, you know, uh, just a way for me to, another way for me to connect with that and feel uh, better about it. Do -do -do. All bodies are beautiful. Let's see here. Da, da, da. Joshua, uh, the main character Randall Olin sticks out like a sore thumb against the rest of the cast because he is—he's like eight feet tall and is socially inept in the in the most wholesome way. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I, I usually love those uh, those character that kind of character profile. Let's see here. I feel like her shoulder needs to be a little bigger over here. Uh, let's see here. And then James, uh, to some degree, life has no purpose if all you do is work. Yes, amen to that. Or what would, what would be a nice alien equivalent? Uh, I, I have to think of one. But yeah, absolutely. Um, was it all? Was it all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy? Is that the phrase? <laughs> excited to do this one digitally i feel like i'll be able to like do a foresty thing a lot easier i was gonna do all of this traditionally originally but i'm like uh, no <laughs> let's let's do uh let's do some uh digital work on this one. Oh, oh this has been a lovely chat guys I, I appreciate that um my uh you know my autistic identity has really been a big part of my life the last few years and i wanted to celebrate it a little bit it deserves, you know, deserves celebrating. And so do you guys. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Something, um, it's a little off topic, but kind of on topic. Something I've been learning about, um, my process for drawing is that 
um, since I'm, I'm a little behind on, on, you know, on some of my skills, breaking things up into pieces has been really, really helpful. So I'll draw this uh, sketch later for the body, and then I'll do like, you know, a sketch layer for the wings. Um, so I can like individually mess with pieces. Um, and as I said, tilt them a certain way, um, shrink them or, or make them larger, um, reposition. It's been really helpful. And I kind of do that with my traditional art now too. So I have a, uh, I think I mentioned it. I have a light board, a little cheap one off online. And um, so like right now I'm working on you might have seen it on my Instagram story the other day. I'm working on a uh, anniversary present for my husband, and it's a little more complex than I'm used to doing, and I'm, I was getting really frustrated with it, but what I've been doing is uh, uh, kind of like almost like animating. I'm like, I got different, different sheets of paper with all the different um, things that I'm doing and positioning them on one canvas, and that way, I don't have to worry about messing up the final product. So I just have like, I got like two or three different pieces of paper that have different parts to it. And um, layering them on top of the light board, kind of like animation, um, has been extremely helpful. And I think I mentioned before that if, if, if you're looking to kind of improve your skills, definitely watch some animators. You learn so much from them. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, David, I am enjoying this conversation. Thank you. I'm, this has been a wonderful conversation. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you all just being here. <laughs> every every week I get more and more surprised and in a good way and like just really it tickles tickles me pink or blue. <laughs> Do -do -do. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel very... Uh, very uh what's what's the word uh grateful that you guys want to like join me on my journey on the spectrum or just my journey in general been it's been a long one but a very rewarding one and the biggest thing is and uh, it's an everyday thing and that's why a few weeks ago i said uh to challenge yourself to say one nice thing about yourself a day for a week and see how you feel afterwards um because a lot of a lot of self-acceptance is just caring about yourself and loving yourself and i know that can be kind of hard some days i still struggle <laughs> um but i have to remind myself i i'm uh, you you know yourself best so why why spend that time being mean to yourself you know um let's see here um, James, as long as someone's body shape isn't, you know, a threat to their own existence, I don't think it matters that much. Yeah, and um, the, uh, I know there's a lot of discussion on, on like that kind of stuff too. Like, yeah, you know, it's some people that that's just how they're built. And but you know, if if they're if they're healthy and and whatnot, then yeah, if they're not being a detriment to themselves. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> Andrew Smith, amen has nothing to do with gender. Actually, it's a Hebrew word meant that means uh, it's true. Uh, it, it is true and certain. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I just, I've grown up uh, in the Midwest. I'm not religious at all, but I just, I've grown up with it. So it kind of just pops out like that. Do, do, do. But yeah. Do, do, do. Mm -mm. Oh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Uh, Joshua Sullivan. If you haven't read the books, The More Child and The Secret Garden, then I highly recommend them. Two of the only books I've read that make me feel like the author truly understood autism. Okay. The More Child. Okay, I got it. I keep forgetting. I should write things down when people tell me. So we got... We have the, the pumpkin anime. Okay, pumpkin... One second. Pumpkin anime. I think I've heard of the more child, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. More child. Okay, awesome. I love trying. I love uh, looking into new things. Thank you. Um, Lixie. Um, I'd also recommend against any body shape that leads to chronic pain. I subbed to the tinnitus for a month and decided it wasn't for me. That sounds painful. Yeah, it's uh, 
another reason I really wanted to take a oh heard my hand crack there uh wanted to take a step back from work I was like ruining my body you know there, there is a difference between like healthy exercise and physical stuff and you know what my work does <laughs> and uh, I always know it's a huge difference um in uh how I feel when I just go to the gym for like an hour or so versus like uh being at my job for eight hours and you know hurting myself <laughs> let's see here uh, james uh souls with the sunglasses there we go james um that is what really matters is being healthy yes um i i realized uh, getting my mental health in check for me was the key to the start of getting healthy you know figuring out like what my brain was doing was a huge thing for me and then the more i understood my brain the more um uh, i was able to like work on other things yeah i want to do I, i'll come back to that um but uh I, you gotta you want to have your, your your heart and your brain and your body healthy is the, I, I have uh, chronic depression, which I uh, now treat with antidepressants. I was kind of a little nervous about that for a while, but that's because I didn't have the correct, I didn't have the right diagnosis. And um, I took one of those genetic tests that kind of like shows you like what your body can and can't process as far as like medication. And that was extremely helpful. So I wasn't feeling like I was playing Russian roulette with medication. <laughs> Because uh, the number one uh, uh, medication on there that uh, that was in the red was the exact one that I was given <laughs> um, at a pretty like in my early twenties, and it 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 just was it was a bad time. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot better now. But um, I've noticed not perfect, but getting. Uh, a lot of the body pains kind of have subsided because you know chronic dep depression is really dangerous and it is um, very serious it can make you feel sick especially over long periods of time oh let's see here and free of tinnitus yeah I'm glad you don't have tinnitus Lexi because that sounds awful I you know being someone that draws if I ruin my hand, then, uh, I mean, there's other ways to do art, but man, it'd be very difficult. Uh, David, uh, Secret Garden is really good. I haven't seen the movie in a few years, but I really love the audio drama by Focus on the Family. Oh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, David. They, uh, they have some of my favorite aud audio dramas like Narnia, Back to the North Wind, and Silas Marner. I really should, like, read a book or do something. I read a lot of, like, other things. Uh, but I really should read a book. It's been a while. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the James. Uh, my body is an absolute unit at processing lactose. No idea why it's so good at it, but it is. <laughs> oh man! I a couple of weeks ago, I had a I had a stream, and uh, I was talking about that uh, I was betrayed by my beloved cheese, but I also was being quite. Uh, I was being a little a little bad with it. I had way too much nacho cheese the other week and I made myself so sick. <laughs> Let's see here. So we have her foot right there. That one's kind of there. Here. Let's see. So her other foot needs to be so there we go. So I was kinda close. Uh, let me start up here at least. Uh, <clears throat> well, I hope uh, for anyone that's, you know, not sure if they're on the spectrum or have been kind of curious, um, I hope any of the stories or things that I share is helpful um, or relatable. Um, I, as I, as, again, I know it's harder to get a diagnosis uh, than, <clears throat> than it should be, uh, but if it helps you like on your journey in any way, I will be very happy about that. I'm not a doctor. Um, I can't diagnose anybody, but I can just share my experience. 
Let's see here. Um, uh, James, I have yet to find an amount of cheese that upsets my stomach. I, I envy you because <laughs> I love cheese. Uh, uh, one of my, uh, my favorite, uh, comfort foods is always mac and cheese. I love mac and cheese. I wish it wasn't so unhealthy to eat it all the time or else I would. <laughs> okay. We're, uh, my husband and I are going uh, out to a fancy steakhouse dinner for our anniversary this month um, and they have lobster mac and cheese and you best bet this little alien is going to be eating a bunch of lobster mac and cheese <laughs> uh, let's see here Lixie, uh, embrace lactose cheese consumption is what keeps America strong <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's funny I think I don't know if it's true correct me if I'm wrong I'm just paraphrasing somebody um, if you do stop eating lactose that um, eventually you will become like lactose intolerant it's like technically humans aren't or humans <laughs> we're not supposed to be eating like cheese and milk and stuff Um, I always uh, bring these fun conversations up with my friends like who was the first person that just you know went up to a cow and squeezed their udders and like oh I wonder if I can consume that <laughs> yeah people I mean I mean there was no internet back then so people were bored so I'm not surprised with some of the things that they, they got themselves into <laughs> Let's see here. Um, James, I am a god amongst men. No amount of cheese can stop me. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait for it. <laughs> Evil laughter. No cheese can stop me. <laughs> oh, man. I haven't really got to use my evil laugh emote. Thank you. <laughs> Oh man, I knew that one would come in handy eventually. <laughs> oh man, you guys are silly. <laughs> Let's see here, uh, Josh. I ate smoked Gouda mac and cheese the other day and it gave me the worst acid reflux I've had in a long time. Would still eat again. Yeah, I, uh don't want to be uh, too TMI, but yeah, the bathroom was a challenge um, for for about a week. I was not, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't digesting correctly, and um, I was like, I'm never going to do that again, and I would totally do that again. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you guys are so silly. <laughs> Your husband's a very lucky man, thank you. I feel like a very lucky alien to have my husband. Because with without him, I wouldn't be, you know, doing this right now. So I'm very grateful for him. <laughs> thank you for saying that though. He's he is a sweetheart. He's my best friend. We love going on food adventures with each other. Oop. Here. Oh, do I need to draw? Foot needs to be maybe about there. Is that what I did wrong? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so maybe this here. <sighs> yeah, our uh, our wedding anniversary is coming up on the seventeenth, which uh, I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you weren't in chat, um, not only is it Autism Acceptance Month, I was diagnosed in uh, 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 April. And I also got married, uh, like, a week or two after the diagnosis. So, like, I just kind of... It was, like, a the biggest epiphany I think I could ever have. <laughs> and I, it's uh, going into my wedding day and just feeling like, oh, this this is me. I was wearing a rainbow dress. Um, it was all magic-themed. We had, like, you know, My Little Pony and Magic... Uh, sorry, uh, Lord of the Rings-themed. Uh, I think we did very well at blending the two. Um... And, uh, yeah, 
was a really good step into my like acceptance of myself. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, David Carroll, uh, happy early anniversary. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, don't worry. I have you on the docket because I think it's going to... I have a notification in my phone, notification in my phone to make plans with you uh, for tomorrow. To, so I was going to look for, see if a Friday would work. So I will message you about that. Uh, Lixie, he's your best friend. I can't believe you friend zoned your husband. <laughs> hey, hey, to be fair, um, we met as kids. Remember, we were really good friends long before uh, we were uh, together, you know? And I, I think you should marry your best friend. Um, because, you know, above all the, all, all the things that come in marriage, like, you know, at the end of the day, that's your best bud, you know? <laughs> yep, there you go. Thanks, James. See, James is backing me up, Lixie. I'm disappointed. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, what, you know, whether, you, you know, people don't, if you don't, you like, I, I got married because I really, I really wanted to marry my husband. But like, that's okay if marriage isn't your thing. But like, your lifelong partner, I feel like, should be your best friend. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's they're 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 in your corner. You know, um, if it wasn't for my best friend, again, I wouldn't be here right now, and I'm very happy about it. I'm wondering if I should. Okay, I might cheat here. Hey, do do. I'm gonna do this. Don't mind me. This also saves me so much time. I was like, uh, don't want to have to draw the same thing twice. But maybe I can just do this. Here. Mm -hmm. That looks broken. <laughs> yeah, I think I might just do something like that. Make sure it's in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, going on eight o'clock. Awesome. This has been a wonderful night, guys. Thank you. Probably I'll either go to I'll probably go to like eight fifteen, maybe eight thirty. Um I've had a terrible headache all day today. The the weather, so February decided it wanted to be spring, and then March decided it wanted to be winter still, and so the change in uh, weather has been just driving me nuts. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I almost here. I might, um, I might continue on this next stream, this picture here, or... Uh, Maybe if I'm trying to get Boozette finished. She's almost finished. I hope hope you guys don't mind that I kind of jump around on projects. Uh, I, I'm trying my best with uh, even with the new schedule um, to uh, get things done um, and also be fair to myself and give myself a day off to like relax or do, do errands or whatnot. I try, I do work on, I do work on my art on weekends too, but I try to save some of that for like family time or friends. So it's a, it's a balance. Oh, let's see here. Maybe I just, hmm. That leg looks a little bigger than that leg. Maybe I should make that leg bigger. Yeah, let's see here. Um, let's go, okay. Making sure I'm caught up with the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's any other, um, like, we have all month long for um, Autism Acceptance Month. If there's any, like, topics or things that you guys are curious about, if I've experienced or not, uh, you're welcome to ask. Um, I will do my best to uh, to answer. Um, I always just let people know, like it says in my rules, I'm not a, I'm not a therapy, I'm not a therapist, so please don't bombard my inbox with that stuff. Um, but um, I'm, I'm happy to share what I can to help. I feel like this needs to. Mm, yeah, I think her left leg needs to be a little, a little slimmer. I'm gonna flip this upside down though. Uh, maybe I will try to find um, some helpful resources for people. I know the. Um, gosh, what is it called? The Autistic Advo Advocacy Network, I think they're called. 
might be a might be i'm have to look into that um it is it is hard to find stuff um there's there's not a lot of like help for adults that's where that's where there's a lot of uh issues um it's kind of like we just have to deal with it <laughs> if that makes sense and it's really frustrating um but i do know building uh building a support system around yourself and um and in your workplace is definitely definitely helpful but i know i'm a little lucky in that regard but i did have to work really 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 hard for a long time to advocate for myself to be you know treated with respect let's see here maybe i need to just sorry talking to myself well let's see here uh Yes. Oh, let's see. uh, sounds good. Jest Jester Cat. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the uh, welcome to my little corner of the galaxy. Uh, my name is Jiffy. Um, we're celebrating Autistic Awareness Month, and we chatted a little bit about April Fools. And we've been having a lovely discussion about uh, autistic advocacy and people's uh, journeys and experiences. Um, I've used my art to find myself, and I've always felt alien, and that's why you see an alien in front of you today. And actually. We're working on an old OC of mine uh, that I made before I found out I was autistic. All right, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that, that I haven't had. That's a nice compliment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, souls, have I ever tried baking a cake? Yes. Would you? Um, so I've told you guys about the uh, the super salad. Um, I'm just a goofball uh, when it comes to things. I will tell you about this one time I made a cake for my ex boyfriend. Um, he, I, I'm, I've always loved the game Portal, and that was the game that like we bonded on. And you know, in, in in Portal, there's the whole cake is a lie. And I looked it up. I was like, what kind of cake is that? I want to make that for him for like Valentine's Day or something. And um, I misread. I think it was supposed to be a half a cup of oil. I read one and one cups of oil, <laughs> and that was the soupiest cake I ever made. Um, and so we, we uh, I had to put it in the freezer. Uh, and then you know toss it out like later uh, or whatnot and I pulled it out later and I go hey look I made an ice cream cake <laughs> it was bad bad joke <laughs> but yes I have baked cakes before uh, I'm not the best baker uh, I've done a similar thing with brownies I had the wrong size pan and didn't realize it and I made a brick a brownie brick. It was not a very good brownie at all. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm. I really, uh, Jester. Thank you very much for the compliment. Uh, one of one of my fa one of my things I really really want for uh, my channel is it to sound nice. So that's why I ask: Is the music too loud? Um, how do I sound? Um, I'm just using a I'm using a Yeti microphone. It's a great like just starter microphone. Uh, they, they they're like a hundred thirty bucks or something. But um, my suggestion is if you want to like you know do any kind of streaming, um, I was just on a local like Facebook group in like my uh, city, and it was for like I think it was like a a nerd like Facebook group for selling stuff, and someone just happened to be selling a Yeti microphone. And, um, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, just happened to be selling a Getty microphone. And, um, one second. Um, only for $45. And apparently that's what he paid for it. Like, he got it from somebody else. So this, this microphone's had a few, few parents already. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I also have a blue Yeti. Well, a pink Yeti. Ooh, I'm envious. That would, my whole desk is pink. <laughs> if you, if that surprises anybody. <laughs> Um, move up here. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty happy we got, like, quite a bit of her, like, some of the sketch done here. Um, but yeah, it was only $45. Um, I had my husband come with me to meet up with this person, but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you're starting, it doesn't always have to be, like, everything has to be, like, brand new. Um, the first, uh, I've told you guys before, but the first computer... That I had was just uh, kind of put together by a friend who just really enjoys like 
hoarding old computer parts and he just made he just had the stuff to make me a computer and it was just a good starting point it did did like what i needed it to do at the time and then over i think it was like a couple years later i have a brand new computer you know and now i can upgrade my vtuber and do some other things i'm really excited about that you know it got to start somewhere i actually um i started a um a folder on my computer it's called jiffy's journey and I'm saving like little things and achievements, like even just this a picture of this microphone. You know, like, oh yeah, I remember that was the first microphone I had. And um, just to kind of show, I love showing progress. So that's why when we're, when I'm working on the refresh series that you guys have been seeing, um, I love showing like where we started and where we ended up. Um, because I, th I think showing the journey and the process is the important part. Let's see here. Do, do, do. David, now I'm envious of your desk. I'm trying to make a pink desk setup. Yeah, I, um, I'll have to see if I can link you. The, the one that I got was only $88 um, and it fits in the corner. Um, and then like, you know, I gotta be a serious gamer. I have some LED strips on the back of it l lighting it up. <laughs> they were actually just at work. I don't know why we were even selling them. I bought two of them. They were marked down on clearance and I bought them and one of them is on, you know, on my desk and the other one is framed around a picture of, that's from a, a friend of mine uh, who did like a spray painting, um, like space picture and he, I, I had him pick the colors of this character actually, purple and orange, and uh, I wanted to hang it up on my desk to kind of go with the whole alien space theme, so I put some LEDs on it. Um, and yeah, I just got those at work. Uh, for like a few dollars and yeah, so not everything always has to be like brand new um, When you're starting off with this kind of stuff Oop. And the the monitor that I had uh, I still have it actually I had been using it as like a TV uh, Like years ago and then um, we did end up giving it to my husband's dad and then he never used it and then I realized I wanted to get into streaming and I asked him if I could have it back so I had it back and then my friend Kyle was kind enough to buy me sorry, I keep messing up this diamond um, was very kind to buy me a new one and so now I have two monitors I'm in the future <laughs> and yeah having two monitors is awesome <laughs> uh, let's see here uh, okay make sure I'm caught up on messages <laughs> So I think it's, um, I did the same, I do the same thing with my traditional art. I take pictures of stuff as I go. So actually, let me zoom out of this really quick. Go in here. Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Example. Here we go. So this is the one that I'm working on digitally right now. So. I always try to take pictures of the process as I go along and then at the end of it I put a, a collage like this together to kind of show the process. Um, since I'm doing more of the VTubing it's kind of hard to sh like do traditional stuff on stream but I will continue uh, to do stuff like this. So I always have like a really rough sketch on, on the first one and then I've actually upgraded to doing multiple <laughs> sketches to make sure I like what's going on before going into like final line work and whatnot. So there's that one. That one's pretty old. Um, here's one I did of Lady Pixel Heart years ago when I first started uh, <clears throat> really getting into my art. Um, that's her. That's her VTuber and. You know, this is a while ago, so you can kind of see as I go along, just like the progression. Let me see here. Uh, this one's one of my favorite ones. I think I always think it's important to like show to show these things. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see, do one more here. Where is it? At? Do do do. Which one do I want to show? Ah, uh, yes, my favorite one of something a lot more current. Uh, whoopsies, that one is not even... I'm sorry, guys. I just noticed some of these weren't even centered. Give me one second. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Lucy. That's one I definitely want to uh, redo digitally. Uh, not that one, but a different one. 
and then sometimes I even um, I, I I get to like keep all my time lapses and whatnot um, here we go but even um, when it comes to doing digital art I still kind of prefer sketching in my sketchbook and then loading it onto my iPad and then going from there so, back here but yeah everyone's process and everyone's journey is a little different that is a-okay I gotta figure out where these antenna are supposed to be sitting on her head. Hmm. I'm thinking I've had them sitting on like the wrong part of her head. Does it need to be more like up here? Yeah. Something like that. always kind of made uh, these antenna kind of like uh, kind of ribbon like I was hoping that was the the part of her that kind of looked like an ant do uh, whoops did it not do it it did not whoops these one second um, I brought it up shortly earlier um, I'm hoping sometime this month I do want to do a, a, a community game night to thank everybody. I had hit a thousand views uh, recently. Um, I'm probably going to be doing Quiplash. Uh, so as soon as I get that set up, I will let you guys know. There we go. That's what I wanted. I'm over here. We're going to flip it. Going to flip it good. Yeah, I'll have to kind of mess around with the perspective on that one. Maybe I need to move these little diamonds up higher. Realize I don't have the same amount of diamonds on each side. Come on. Did it? Just did it do it again? Darn it. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll go to about 8.30 and then I'll call it for the evening. This has been a lovely night. Thank you guys and thanks for celebrating Autism Acceptance Month with me. We can continue for the rest of the month and uh, like I said, if there's anything you guys would like to talk about or uh, to add, I'm more than happy to. Come on, I'm hitting the wrong thing. Uh, merge down, please. <laughs> uh... Oh, if I had a thousand sub souls, I think I would, I, I would, I would definitely, processing big emotions can be kind of hard for me. I would definitely, I'd probably be crying. <laughs> uh, let me see, do I have an emote for that? Nope, that's, nope, there we go. Nope, that's scared. Oh, darn, I know I have a sad one. No, I'm not scared. Uh, which one is it? Oh, no. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, wait, hold on. No, it's not that one. Uh, this one? Oh, nope. I thought I had one for sad, I guess. But nope, that's laugh. Evil laugh. <laughs> oh, here we go. Tears. Okay. Yeah, I had, um, oh, thank you. Thank you, AMW. Welcome to the stream. Um, let me, I'm not crying, I swear. I'm just figuring out my toggles. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm working on um, an uh, old character, uh, alien character um, that I created before finding out I was autistic. Um, the alien that you see before you is the result of a uh, self, uh, self-discovery journey through my art and getting a late, diagnos a late diagnosis. <laughs> and so yeah, for, to celebrate, I wanted to work on an old OC of mine that uh, signaled my my neurodivergence way before I was diagnosed. So, uh, but yeah, uh, souls, if I hit a thousand subs, that'd be crazy. I think, where am I sitting at right now? Um, it was like 40 something last I saw, which is awesome. Um, I really appreciate that a lot. <laughs> um, that would, that would be real crazy. <laughs> oh man. 
I, I, they always, you know, and when people hit those kind of milestones, I, I do understand, like, how, like, how do you fathom, like, getting there? <laughs> do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's see here. I need to figure out these, uh, there we go. Do, do, do. But that, that would be awesome, but I'm just grateful, uh, for the people that are here right now. Um, let's see. If you don't mind, when were you diagnosed? Um, I was diagnosed at age 31, so about five years ago. Um, it was, uh, it was very life-changing for me personally. Um, but it, it took a long time to get there. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really, really grateful uh, for it. And as I've mentioned uh, before, I know it's not as accessible for everybody as it should be. And then there's also as, uh, Babs pointed out earlier, there's just some doctors that are still really ignorant and like behind on like what it means to be autistic, be, be autistic and whatnot. Um, like, oh, they're able to do eye contact or they have great social skills. It's like, you don't know anything. <laughs> you know nothing. <laughs> just a little, little misinformed. Maybe I need to not draw it so round. I'll have to come back to the... Yeah, I, I gotta figure out how to position the things on her little nubs on her head for her antenna, so I'll have to probably come back to that. So in the meantime, I will... Let's do her clothes really quick. So I'm gonna do that in blue, I think. Yeah, color coding my layers have been really helpful, or not my layers, uh, my, even my sketch sketch layers, there we go, has been really helpful. So I'm going to do another one, and this is just going to be her clothes. Let's see here. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I created this channel, and I started my art page uh, back in, like, uh, end of 2016, beginning of 2017 as a way to like do something for myself and have some accountability for myself and um it and over time i had realized a lot about myself just by making uh character creations one of my favorite things to do and the characters i was creating were reflections of myself so, art is such a fun fun thing <laughs> Close. Let's see. Oh, not a problem. That is absolutely okay. Um, if if I if I don't ever feel comfortable sharing information, I'll just let you guys go. Uh, sorry, eh, let you guys know. Um, I I'm usually pretty open about stuff. Uh. Just as long as everyone knows it doesn't, you know, give an excuse to have access to me, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but I am I am more than happy to share my experiences with everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see here. Uh, just asking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, not a problem. Um, I'm hoping that if I, you know, any of the things I do share will help someone else if they're, you know, again, not sure if they're on the spectrum or, um, or just kind of feel like you relate, you know? Even if you're not neurodivergent, anyone is welcome here. I don't ever want to leave anybody feeling left out or alien like I felt. Try to be as inclusive as I can. lovely night of discussion. The past couple weeks have been real fun, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been fun for you guys, and or, or at least informative. Um, all my uh, streams are uploaded afterwards, so if you haven't, um, if you haven't, uh, if you didn't catch the first half of this, uh, you're more than welcome to watch it after afterwards. Um, 
uh, we were talking earlier about the history of April Fools and then uh, getting into the the awareness or sorry acceptance month. I apologize. Um, yeah. But we're working on Miss Ekna here. Um, I'm actually really happy to be drawing her again. Uh, she she has made me realize so much about myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're wondering um, where my VTuber was made or the music that you're listening to tonight, it should be all down in the de description. Uh, the original concept of my VTuber was drawn by myself, and Lady Pixelheart just did her magic and, uh, and you have what you see before you. Uh, she is currently open for commissions. I'm going to throw that out there again. Uh, so all of her information should be in my uh, description box. Uh, she does more than just VTubers. She does art, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, definitely look, hit her up. Let's see here. Uh, souls. Oh, I think Oz autism is pretty cool and see how the autism brain works different than a normal brain. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Souls. Uh, Jiffy, do you remember a girl living with half a brain? I think I've heard of that story. That That's really fascinating. Uh, the human body are, is just an interesting, interesting thing. I, I, I don't know how else to, to say. <laughs> let's see. Not the best with clothing. Um, I, it's something I need to practice. Uh, probably come back to her shirt. Uh, a lot of my uh, characters, I try to make their outfits kind of simple because I'm not very creative that way. Uh, let's see here. Bring, yep. Do, do. I think uh, being different is okay. Um, like, I don't know, if everyone was the same, it'd be a pretty boring place. Copy paste. And then we're gonna do oops, nope. And we're gonna do it again. We're gonna where's it at? Copy and then we're gonna paste. And just keep doing that. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm not drawing all these circles. You can't make me. <laughs> do, 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 do. Copy. And then we're gonna paste it. Here we go. Be here going to 818. Cool. We got about 10 minutes ish left. How do you. Um, I pretty much settled on doing uh, quip lashes. I feel like that's the easiest for everyone to have like access to. So let me know if you guys are good with that. I'll probably have more than that for the Jackbox games, but that's probably the one I'm going to start with. Uh, let's see, Souls. All right, I still think I have Nintendo DS that still works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. I am thinking me and my husband have a 3DS. Uh, Lixie, if anyone, uh, if anyone is the same, it sounds like you have yourself an army of Cybermen. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. The th one of the things I like to tell people is, you know. Uh, there's only one, there's only one you, and that, that does make you special, because there is no one else like you. <laughs> that doesn't mean we don't have our struggles, though. You know, no one's perfect. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I might have to make those circles bigger, but that's okay. I'll come back to that. True, true is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, David, I am the black sheep of the Cybermen. I am a Borg. <laughs> Circles. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
です。うん。Oh, I was making that way too hard on myself. <laughs> that is what I do. There we go. I want to combine those just yet, though. Okay, some pants, some shorts. You will be upgraded. I think I can do an okay robot voice.、Uh, let's see here.、Um, ah, I, I, if I think about it too much, I can't do it.、Um, uh, I would like to order an eight pizza. I, would,、uh, <coughs> I can't do it. Sorry. <clears throat> I am a robot.、Um, would you like eat pizza? Sorry, I can't do it right now. I'm trying to imitate <laughs> someone else、uh, who does a、uh, robot voice by like inhaling.、Um, and just, <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not really the funnest process. <laughs> I'll have to try it again some other time. Here.、Um, do. Do. I think、uh, my, favorite, my favorite robot voice of all time, and she's also my favorite villain of all time, is GLaDOS from Portal. Absolutely love GLaDOS. <laughs> you remember that time you threw me in the incinerator? <laughs> And we all had a big laugh. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Like some sort of weird loincloth that I had. I don't even know if I even want to have it on there. <laughs> okay, I'll write these up here. <laughs> okay, 24. Do、um, you guys ever make noises when you're like doing a task? I just find myself making noises. I. Pretty sure I was a parrot in another life. Boop. Boop. Come on. Boop. And boop. Nope. Boop. Whoopsies. Nope. <laughs> oh. Um, and and、um, I always forget to say this. Um, if you guys haven't,、uh, if you would. Wouldn't mind、uh, taking time to like and、uh, like and subscribe.、Uh, all that fun jazz.、Um, and if you feel like there's someone else、uh, that would enjoy hanging out in this little corner of the galaxy, send them my way. Do, do, do. I always forget to do that part, and I know it's necessary. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It, it does help me out on the, on the logistical side. Makes the algorithm go burr. <laughs> do, do. Oopsies. Something like that.、Oop. Close enough, I'll fix that later. This is just the sketch. I keep drawing it again like it's the final product. 
Uh, let's see here. David, there's a reason I have headphones at work. I am literally vinyl at work. I never take off my headphones unless I have to. <laughs> yeah, they've been kind of cracking down of having ear uh, even earplugs in at, uh, at my job. I think if I was wearing, uh, like, the loop earplugs or, uh, like, headphones for noise canceling, it'd be a little bit different. Um, we just unfortunately, um, had a shooting down the road at a Target, um, I think it was probably last year, um, but one of the employees, uh, at that place said, oh, I had my, my AirPods in and I had no idea it was even happening, so... They're like, no more AirPods. None. <laughs> like, it does make sense, but I kind of need that to, like, help me. Uh, I like to have one in one ear. So it kind of helps my ADHD brain stay focused if it's kind of, like, semi-being distracted, <laughs> if that makes sense. I always, uh, um, oh, I just realized I'm drawing on this layer. Um, whoopsie daisies. Um, come on. Um, I, I always say that I'm I, I'm living life on uh, constant side quests because that's how I get stuff done. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I would be there all day. But if, you, I, if I don't make uh, what I'm working on the main event, I I will more likely to do it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. That demand avoidance. <laughs> oh my god. Come back over here. Uh, David. Oh no, yeah, understandable. I work downstairs, the kitchen area, so we don't even deal with customers. Oh, I envy you, sir. Um, though, to be fair, uh, the schedule I do have... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna spin this upside down. Um, I tend... I work really early, and, um, it's a get-in, get-out kind of situation. I still do have to talk with customers, but, um... It's not as bad, if that makes sense. Okay. I don't know if I like how I did her eyelashes. I'm... I end up drawing the really big chunky eyelashes, so maybe I'll just stick to doing that. That's kind of been my thing lately. Whoopsies. I'm using a pencil brush so it's not coming off as crisp as I want it right now. Oopsies. Mm -hmm. And is it 8.29? Okay. I think I'm going to call it here for the evening. Um, I've had a great time with you guys this evening. Um, I hope uh, it was fun and informative, um, silly. Um, I'll probably just continue either working on this or one of the many projects I got going on next week. Um, and as soon as I know about a day that I can do the um, the um, community game night, I will let you guys know. Let me get here. Um, get this back on this toggle. There we go. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. Um, yeah, any any feedback's good. Uh, please, uh, you know, my emails should be linked on my YouTube. Any comments you guys have? Um, remember, drink water. Yes, yes, yes. I've been I've been drinking water the whole time. It actually went well an ice drink. It's technically water. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. If, if you wouldn't mind liking and, and and sharing this video and subscribing, if you had fun, I hope to see you guys uh, next week uh, and we'll have some hopefully some more fun conversation. <laughs> have a good night, guys.